Let's look at some shit. This is a question that comes from YouTube from... Do I say their name? Or maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, don't say their name. Like a privacy thing? Yeah. Yeah, you think that's all right? Yeah. All right. Well, you know who they are. You have all the Seagal movies grouped together, but then there's some stuff obviously grouped together by director. McTiernan, Harlan, Wu. I can address that one right off the bat. So the ordering system is... Yes, it is mostly by director. That can get confusing when you only have maybe one of a director. And so you s start to have to f figure out, well, what's, what's important here? Is it genre? Is it actor? Each section has its own sort of setup. All right, so at least this shelf, the shelf you were referring to. So it's Nighthawks and Hard to Kill. These are Bruce Melmoth movies. One Stallone, one Seagal, okay. So you take the Seagal, you want to try to keep the Seagal together. So to keep that together, we have the John Flynn movies, which is Lock Up, Out for Justice, and Brain Scan. Now, Lock Up is a Stallone movie, and Out for Justice is a Seagal movie. So those can all kind of stay together. From there, because you want to keep the Seagal together, you'll put Mark for Death on Deadly Ground, Fire Down Below, Executive Decision, and the Under Siege movies, because <clears throat> those are the, the Seagal movies. Under Siege 1 is an Andrew Davis movie. Also did Above the Law, which is a Seagal movie, and The Fugitive. So you kind of have an action pack here with several directors and several actors, but that's sort of the best way to keep these together. And if you want to go off on an action kick from that, next, for no particular reason other than the width of certain movies sometimes only fit on a shelf together. So we have the Mark Lester movies here. We have Bobby Joe and the Outlaw and Class of 1984 and Commando. Those are all action-y and again, they fit on the shelf, so that's fine. You can move the action into French Connection and of course French Connection has to go with The Exorcist and that goes there because The Exorcist is a special edition that's a little wider and that sort of fits into the shelf best. You want to kind of keep the action going. John McTiernan down here with Predator next to a Die Hard box set, which has two John McTiernan movies in it, but also a Rennie Harlan movie in it. So you finish off the John McTiernan with Last Action Hero, then you move into Rennie Harlan with Cliffhanger and The Long Kiss Goodnight. Now, of course, Elm Street 4 is over in the Nightmare on Elm Street set, and that goes with Wes Craven, because we'll give that to him. We'll let him have Elm Street. Sequels and box sets are difficult. The, the One of the more complicated sequels, or franchises, I should say, is uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Because Beverly Hills Cop 1 has to go with the other Martin Brest movie that we have. But then Beverly Hills Cop 2 has to go over here with the Tony Scott movies. And the Tony Scott movies sort of have to blend in to the Quentin movies because True Romance has to share a bed with Quentin and Tony. Then we come back over here to Beverly Hills Cop 3, which has to go with the John Landis movies. And this is sort of a children's family comedy section, and so the John Landis has to be sort of sandwiched in between the Ivan Reitman and the Harold Ramis movies because if you should already fucking know why. You know, I don't have to explain that to you. This is one of the more complicated sections, and it's about to get even more complicated. Follow me with this. Obviously, THX, American Graffiti, and Star Wars 1, 2, 3, 4 have to go together. Irving Kirshner and Richard Marquand, obviously. But then, just to be chronological, Star Wars goes to Super 8, and Super 8 goes to Force Awakens. So there's a division in the Star Wars. After Force Awakens, we go to Monsters and Godzilla to get to Rogue One to keep the Gareth Edwards together. Rogue One goes to Looper, and Looper goes to Last Jedi to keep the Ryan Johnson together. Once Rise of Skywalker makes its way into this, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> Star Wars is going to be out of whack, but again, director comes first. 
Another good example of how director can be used to blend into a genre where we have the documentaries that take this shelf and then go on to the second shelf. The documentaries end with Crumb and that is the best, that is for anyone, that is the best excuse for documentaries to then merge into Christmas movies because you can end with Bad Santa and go into Christmas movies. Let's look at it. <clears throat> this is okay. This isn't bad. Um, Obviously, I took the, the the actual cover and reversed it to fit the which the original poster, but also this was also pretty much the VHS cover too. Haven't looked at it yet because it's not summertime. Special feet. This is uh, Shout Select, by the way. Special feet. There's a there's a second disc of special features. Most interesting to me is something called How Can I Help You? Confessions of a Gameplay Counselor which is Nintendo had people that you could call up and ask for uh, tips and advice on how to get past level six of whatever. That's what I'm most interested in. Something called a clinical analysis of the wizard. I'll tell you right now, that doesn't sound very fun to me at all. I don't think <laughs> clinical analysis of anything is very exciting. Or who knows, it might be great. In some areas of our collection, I swear you have like a a babes section. Am I correct? You are correct, yes. These movies don't have any other directors. You like a bunch of one-offs from indie directors that didn't go anywhere from the 2000s. And so there's no nothing else to really pair them with other than exactly what I just described. I don't know. What else are you going to put once and whip it and happy-go-lucky next to? <laughs> and the anniversary party other than other indie movies it's just an indie movie section yeah. and that's you <laughs> that's just me <laughs> uh, this shelf is tricky but it's interesting so we uh, we start with uh, Nightmare City I think because there was an empty space so because we wanted to keep a few zombie pictures these aren't all the zombie movies but we mm -hmm. just to have a zombie movie here to go into Return of the Living Dead, which you go into Savini's Night of the Living Dead. Then for Return of the Living Dead 2, but then Society and Return of the Living Dead 3 go together. Brian U... Usna. Usna. Dawn of the Dead remake, because that just makes sense, and that's the only one we have, because it's better than the original. But with all that, you can uh, ease into Romero... Creep Show and Donna, Day of the Dead, excuse me, because those are the only Romero movies I think are worth having. But with that, even though there's a separation of Day of the Dead because it's chronological, you can use Creep Show to creep in to the uh, Stephen King adaptations. That are, there are some, other, like, there's obviously the Miser uh, Misery and the Shining or somewhere else because those belong with other directors. These are sort of the Lucy's with no other directors that we could put them with. Do you can still consider um, the tall shelf to be our shelf of prestige? It's gone through many changes since 11 years ago when we started calling it that. As long as it has my five favorite directors on there, then yes. And you make sure that it stays that way? Yes. They have nowhere else to go. Who are your five favorite directors? Kubrick, number one. Scorsese, number two. Down here is PTA, number three. Lynch, number four. Michael Mann, number five. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't, because it's fluctuating constantly, because some of these folks are always adding things. Sometimes we're deleting things, or canceling things. Put a hashtag in front of that. But it obviously would make sense that, say, Paul Thomas Anderson would be perfectly sandwiched in between Jonathan Demme and Robert Altman. Tony Scott blends into Quentin, but Quentin obviously burns into the very small library of Robert Rodriguez. And I was just noting the other day that Spielberg should be next to Zemeckis, but it doesn't always work that way because, like I said, if you have a certain number of discs, something can't spill over from one shelf to the next. And so if something doesn't fit with that something, and then you have either too much space or too little space, then it just doesn't work that way. 
What if I told you I wanted to take over the DVD uh, organization and completely change everything? To be what? Alphabetical order? N not necessarily. Yes, necessarily. I'm pretty sure you've been hounding me for that for over a decade now. Not specifically that, just something different. Okay. I mean, how? If you want to turn it into Blockbuster, go right ahead. I'm not doing that either. I don't Do you know. Do have trouble I'm... finding things? No, I'm not saying I have trouble. Then what's the problem? I'm just saying it would be, you know, passing the buck, uh, letting me take over the uh, the effort of having to rearrange the, this all. Like, why not let me do it for a change? You're in charge of all the other furniture. Which you hate that I move. And I can come home and everything's fucking different. And I'm used to it and that's fine. Now, these are our movies. But if you can give me a solid reason as to what's, what's broken needs to be fixed. No, nothing's broken necessarily. Just change. Just change? Just change. Yeah. For the sake of change. Yeah. I think I need a change. <laughs>